Hello, welcome to the second day of this unit. Uh, today we're going to be learning more about quadratic functions. Now, uh, let's look at some of these words associated with them and, um, and try to name some things. A vertex. Oops, that disappeared. We'll just bring it down here and draw an arrow, I guess. Um, a vertex would be this point right there. The point where the parabola changes directions. The axis of symmetry will be the line that would be an axis. And it would be the line that this parabola reflects over. So it would be a straight line up and down that's in this one at about x equals negative 2. Now the x-intercepts, there are two of them. One of them is right here, and the other one it's weird, um, is right here. We can also call those roots. The y-intercept, let's see if this goes, oh, it does. The y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, so that will be right there. And now we want to know when f of x is less than 0 and when it's greater than 0. Well, f of x is less than 0, so f of x is the same thing as y. That's below y, so that's negative values f of x is greater than 0 above the x-axis, because the y values are now 2, 4, 6, 8. These are all above 0. These are all below 0. All right, so there's so many forms with quadratics. Let's just try to clear this up a little bit. Now, um, we've known the standard polynomial form. Um, vertex form. Um, this is actually called general form. Um, vertex form, factored form. Now factored form and intercept form. Um, the intercept form could be the same as factored form, but f factored form can be written a, a little bit different. So these two um, just as long as the polynomial is factored, we'd say it's in factored form. For intercept form, these two are the actual roots. That'll be a little bit more clear here. So the factored form, if I factored this all the way out, it would be 6 times 3x minus 2 times x plus 1. The in intercept form, we can't have any value in front of my x's, any coefficient. So um, I'd have to divide by 3 on both of these. Um, and so this would be x minus 2 thirds. Uh, now these are not equivalent. Um, if I wanted to write this in intercept form, I would pull a 3 out of this. So this would be 18 x minus 2 thirds y plus 1. All right. So let's analyze some quadratic equations using um, without using our calculators to answer questions like, how does it open? What is the y-intercept? Where's the axis of symmetry? What's the vertex? Uh, what is the what are the y-intercepts? And where is this function positive and negative? All right, let's look at this. Um, y equals so it's either going to open up or down. Since this is positive, we're going to say this opens up. The y-intercept is where x is equal to 0. So if I put in 0 here, 0 squared minus 0 minus 21, our y-intercept would be the point 0, negative 21. To find the vertex of the f this function, what we can do is put this in vertex form. So y equals x. Uh, oh, I was going to skip a step, and I shouldn't x squared minus 4x plus something. And what we'd have to add here is 4. So if I add it to this side, I'd also have to subtract another 4. 
So this would be y is equal to, this thing would be y minus 2 squared, and then minus 25. So our vertex, we go 2 to the right, and 25 down. Our axis of symmetry is going to be aligned with our vertex. So if we draw this graph out, we went 2 to the right, and 25 down, say this is negative 25, then it's going to have some form like this. Now, um, not actually, it's going to be way wider than that. If that's 25 down, I apologize. But, uh, for our business of this part, the axis symmetry goes right through the vertex. So it's a vertical line up, so it goes up and down, and it passes through 2. So our symmetry is x equals 2. Our x-intercepts, well, there's a couple of ways we can do this. The easiest way is to see if this factors. So, um, so if this factors, this would be x minus 7. Oh, it looks, it looks like it factors really well x minus 7, x plus 3, because these two multiply to be negative 21, but they add up to be negative 4x. So this is already an intercept form. So my uh, x-intercepts are going to be at um, 7, 0. And this one would produce a negative 3, 0. All right, so now there's something called a sign chart. Now, a sign chart is very important as we continue, and even more so as we continue with this chapter and next chapter, but even more important in calculus. But for our sign chart, we need to know uh, the points at which this function could cross zero. And here it would be at 7 and negative 3. So those are what we put on the sign chart right now. And now we think about, we plug in some value on each side of these. And um, so we can draw this out. So let's plug in any value greater than 8. If I plug in any value greater than 8, 8, all right, greater than 7, say, let's choose 8. 8 minus 7 is 1, 8 plus 3 is 11. So both those signs are positive. So everything to the right of 7 will be multiplying a positive number times a positive number, which will create a positive number. If we put, plug in a number between negative 3 and 7, you can pick any number. Let's plug 0 in, because that's the easiest. 0 minus 7 is negative 7. 0 plus 3 is 3. If you multiply those two numbers, you create a negative number. And you could pick in any number between negative 3 and 7, and all of those will produce a negative answer. Now if we go to the left of negative 3, say uh, negative 4, negative 4 minus 7 is a negative 11, negative 4 minus 3 is a negative 1. If you multiply a negative times a negative, you get a positive. So that's how we create a sign chart. So it's y is above 0 to the right of 7 and to the left of 3. y is below 0 between negative 3 and 7. Now I kind of made a quick little graph up there, but we can draw it a little nicer. I'll actually move it up like this, because this goes down to, what is it, negative 25. So let's go by 5s. Five. five negative 10, negative 15, negative 20, and negative 25. And now this x-axis doesn't have to go by 5, so let's just go by 1s. All right, so we'll have a, this value at negative 3, this value at 7. 
Uh, those are my x-intercepts. I have an axis of symmetry at 2, so at 2 I can draw my vertical line. The vertex is at 2, negative 25. So 2, negative 25, that's my vertex. The y-intercept is at negative 21. And now we can draw it. We know it goes up. So it looks... Like so. That should have crossed through that point. And there's a better graph than my quick little sketch up here. This doesn't look very good compared to this. This you can see more of the graph. All right. Now let's try to generalize this. If I have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, um, how does it open? Well, if a is greater than 0 or positive, uh, it's going to open up. If a is less than 0, it's going to open down. The y-intercept. Intercept, if I plug in 0 for x, so 0 is going to be my x value, my y value will be c. Now, if I want to find my axis of symmetry, now to find the axis of symmetry, we'll have to go through um, and solve this and put this into, solve this for x. Um, now, to do that, we have a formula x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, the negative b over 2a, that right there, it tells us where we move to the left and to the right. So, um, our axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative b over 2a. Because this, this part gives us my x value of my vertex. So um, to find my value of my vertex, I plug negative b over 2a in for my x. And then I plug that in to this equation to find my y, which doesn't look as nice. Um, we would multiply a times negative b over 2a squared plus um, b times negative b over 2a plus c. Now this isn't something that I would sit and memorize. What I would know is that my x value I obtain here, and then I plug it in here to find my y value. What are my x-intercepts? My x-intercepts are just these from this equation. x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now this negative b over 2a, maybe I should draw this out. I'll do it on the next page just because I think this is good for you to know what you're plugging into your calculator. So negative b over 2a will give you the location of your axis of symmetry. So this would be negative b over 2a. So if I'm just going to draw some generic parabola. So if negative b over 2a is where my axis symmetry is, this distance here is the other part. So we know that this is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This part is going to be b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And there's a square root on that. And so is this. That's the distance. All right. So that's why we have this value. And we add and subtract to find my two x-intercepts. All right. Now, where is the graph positive or negative? So that depends if it's um, 
concave up or concave down. Uh, it's going for every parabola, the left hand side and the right hand side are going to go towards the same value. So the far left and the far left, far right will always be the same value. In between the two x intercepts, assuming that there are x intercepts, it would be the opposite sign. All right. Now you try this one on your own. Pause the video and see how far you get. All right. Hopefully you have gone through this. This one is going to open up. The y-intercept is at 0, negative 9. Its vertex is also at 0, negative 9, so its axis symmetry is at x equals 0. Now the x-intercepts are at 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. The, um, it's going to be positive to the left of negative 3 and to the right of 3, and in between negative 3 and 3, it's going to be negative. So here is our graph. All right. Now try this one. Pause the video and see how far you get. All right, hopefully you are done with this problem. Now this one opens down. The y-intercept is at 0, 0. Its vertex is at negative 2, 4. And now the axis symmetry is x equals negative 2. It's going to cross x-intercepts are at 0, 0 and negative 4, 0. It's going to be above 0 between negative 4 and 0 but below 0 to the left of negative 4 and to the right of 0. Oh, can you believe this? I made a mistake. Uh, as I was going through this problem, I apparently didn't pay attention that it was... I didn't even go back and look at it. Now, one thing that's great about this, how I was able to tell is my sign chart didn't match up with my graph. I knew it had to be positive in this area, and it wasn't positive in that area. So I immediately said, or, or was noticed that it was wrong. I feel a little foolish, but oh well. Let's keep rolling. All right, try this one. This is a little bit more difficult. See how you do. All right. Hopefully you've seen that this one is kind of a more difficult one. Uh... This one's going to open down. Its vertex y-intercept is at 0, 5. Hopefully this is easy so far. My computer's slowing down. Um, so the vertex, I got at negative 1, 7. Let's just get rid of this shade altogether now. And so my axis symmetry is x equals negative 1. So the difficult part is finding the x-intercepts. This doesn't factor well. So what we need to do is use quadratic formula. And um, I got a square root of 56 under or for um, my root here. So that can factor, or that can be simplified into 2 root 14, which could be negative 1 plus or minus 1 half root 14. Now keep in mind that negative 1 makes perfect sense because my axis symmetry is at negative 1. Now, my intercept form would be x minus this and x minus this with the negative here. Uh, however, if I just wrote those two values out, I won't have this. What we need it to be, actually, I even have it wrong in here, we need to have a negative 2 out in front um, in order to make it equal to this. Because if I multiplied the first two terms together, it would be x times x. And we wouldn't be able to get a negative 2 unless we put that out in front. Um, now, our sign chart, we put our two roots on. And um, it's going to be negative to the right and to the left. And it's going to be positive in between the two roots. So the graph looks something like this. Now, you might think that this is tough to do without a calculator. But if you think the square root of 14 is a little bit less than the square root of 16, so a little bit less than 4, if I take half of a little bit less than 4, I'll be a little bit less than 2. So um, you have to just go out from negative 1 a little bit 
um, less than 2 to the right, a little less than 2 to the left. And those are my x-intercepts. All right. Now, this is a tough problem. But believe it or not, they can get even a little tougher. Um, let's take a look at this one. Pause the video and see how well you can do. All right. Hopefully, you are done with this problem. And this one's going to open up. Intercept is at 0, 2. Its vertex is at negative 1, 1. Axis symmetry is at x equals negative 1. It's going to cross at uh, um, negative 1 plus or minus root 3 over 3. Now, the square root of 3, we know that it's a little bit less than 2. And if we divide, or, yeah, um, and if we divide that by 3, it's going to be less than 1. So um, somewhere less than 1. Um, so even less than 2 thirds. So pretty small number. And it's going to be negative between those two values and positive on the outside of those values. So our graph is going to look something like this. All right. Here's our last problem for the day. It is something new, so make sure you try this one.